So why does Sony HTA9 continue to be the best sound system that you can purchase this year? Why is it better than any soundbar that you can purchase? And even if you was thinking about the Sony Q990B that is more recent than this one, I have swapped that system. And is it possible that I'm really happy? There is some things that are not the best, but I'm keeping this one. If you want to know everything about it, stay tuned until the end of the video. Hi everyone, Marcus here from Edpack, and if you love tech, this is the place for you. And today we are going to talk once again about the Sony product, and this time the HTA9 that I have connected to my Sony A95K that I simply love it. And when you take out of the box, and if you have seen a lot of videos or even a lot of photos, it definitely looks like that this product is white, but as you can see here, that's definitely not white, whatever is the perception that you have about this product. And even the touch it's amazing. One of the things that I really like about this sound system that you normally will not find in a soundbar is that the rear speakers, they are exactly the same specifications that you have on your front speakers. The big advantage with this is that you can push the same amount of sound. And when we talk about sound, you have here Dolby Atmos. And for someone that came from the Q990B, that was considered the best soundbar on the market when you jump to a Sony HTA9 is not even comparable when we talk about Dolby Atmos. I always felt that with that soundbar or any soundbar it was always lacking a bit of sound coming from the back and here is very very immersive and even when you have something passing on the diagonal for example you can really feel the sound going on top of you and going in a different direction. Another thing that I have to say to you guys that I, I simply love about Sony is they always consider that that customer doesn't need to have a smartphone or having any other device to try to use their product. So you just need their remote. And obviously inside these speakers, you'll find a microphone in each one of them. So when you are trying to do the calibration of the sound system, you don't really need to put a microphone in the middle of the room to try to calibrate. So definitely a plus that you have with the Sony HTA9. When we talk about calibration, I have to say to you guys that I had no issue whatsoever. I saw a lot of reviews saying that they encountered some problems and some issues to connect their speakers and to calibrate with their TV. I have to say to you guys, first of all, I have purchased the Sony HTA9 with my own money. And also my TV, it's a Sony A95K that I purchased with my own money. Maybe if you are trying to connect to another brand, you may encounter some problems and some issues, but in my case, I never had any issues and I've been using for the past two months. And obviously you can purchase the Sony HTA9 as it is, but if you are like me and you love bass, I have purchased the big boy, the Sony SW5 that it's amazing subwoofer. But I want just to put side by side with the subwoofer from the Samsung, the Samsung Q990B. So that one was giving me issues with my neighbors. <laughs> the sound was just echoing and passing the walls and disturbing them. Since I have the Sony SW5, is the sound is very, very tight and it's very easy to control. Many times with other sound systems, I always found that the bass can basically destroy the sound of everything. I never found that using the Sony SW5. If you are thinking to purchase the Sony HTA9, I definitely recommend you to purchase the SW5. Even if you live in a small apartment, I never had the experience that I take out of this subwoofer. One of the things that I've never been a big, big fan is to have this cover that they can get full of air. But I have to say to you guys that this one is not really magnetic when we talk about four. And since I have seven animals at home, six rabbits and a cat, I have to say to you guys that I'm quite impressed that it's not full of dust constantly. But obviously this can be damaged by your cat or your dog, so something to have in consideration if you want to purchase the HTA9 and purchase the SW5. Another thing that I really like about this subwoofer is this material here. I believe that you guys can see this material is like a leather. If you put this side by side with the subwoofer of the Samsung Q990B, this feels 
really really expensive i never had a subwoofer that feels so premium like this one and this one you don't have to connect anything to your sound system is just connected by bluetooth and when we talk about speakers you'll find one coming from the front and another one coming from the bottom another thing that i really like it to test it with the sony ht a9 is their 360 reality sound that is proprietary to sony but unfortunately you can't find in every single place you'll find for example in amazon music where i test it but for example you will not find in spotify and since i'm a spotify user I was a bit disappointed to don't find in there. Even if you go to Amazon Music, you'll find few tracks, not a lot of content, and maybe not a lot of content of the artists that you like, but the experience is from another level. Another thing that I didn't like it so much on the Sony ht 9 is the length of the cables that you can connect here on the bottom. And yeah, they are cool. They are the same color as your speakers, but they are too, too small. And if you have to position your speakers where you want and you want to try to hide them, you normally need a long cable. And the one providers, it's impossible to do that. Be aware that you will have to buy some extra cables to connect your ht 9 if you really want to hide them in a specific place hopefully in my house i didn't have to do that but i know that for many of you guys that will be an extra cost that you have to put on top of your sony ht a9 another thing that i really like is the size of the controller of the sony hd a9 it's not really big it almost looks like an apple tv a little bit bigger i like that the fact that the front is just plastic is not like the front of the soundbar of the Samsung Q990B that obviously you have that grill so when you try to look to that small screen you have the grill in front so it's more visible in here when we turn this to the other side you're going to have turn on and turn off you have your ethernet cable you have a usb port to do your updates next to it you have something that many of you guys have complained the fact that you have a mini jack here and to use the speakers of your TV as the central speaker for experience and for me that I have a Sony A95K I have no complaints whatsoever to use the TV as my central speaker but I have to say to you guys if you put side by side for example a Sony A90J next to a Sony A95K the quality of sound is not the same and it can provide the same experience that you have with the Sony A95K so have that in mind and I think for that television it's better that you use it without the central speaker. It works amazing even without, but I found that I have a little bit more punch when I use my Sony A95K as my central speaker. On the bottom, you are going to find two HDMIs, one obviously to connect to your TV and obviously connecting to the eARC port. And if you need an external HDMI to connect to another device, you'll be able to do it in here. Another thing that I want to talk about the Sony ht a 9 is the connectivity. And since I have this system, I have to say that few times, and I'll say what, one time a month, you can hear that the sound disconnect for a millisecond and it connects once again. So you have like a cut on the sound and it continue. It doesn't bother me so much because it doesn't happen every day or every week. I think that that problem also happened because when you take this out of the box, you have a paper on top saying that the controller should be 1.5 meters away from each speaker. At my living room, it's impossible to happen because my living room is really, really small. So I think that that issue happens because of that and another thing is this brings a problem that it happens depending on the service that you are using i'll explain in a bit but we'll reach there that is something that bothers me a bit even that was not a reason for me to give back my sony ht a9 and by the way if you have a 55 or 65 inch and you want a more immersive experience with your TV really soon I'm going to do the review of the Goovy Backlight T2 so if you are curious about this product definitely don't forget to subscribe to the channel but when we talk about that Phantom Central speaker is it good enough compared to the traditional soundbar or even connecting to my TV and using my TV as a central speaker is it good enough compared for example to the Samsung Q990B that I used to have at my house and I have to say to you guys that no it's not so 
in that case the Samsung Q990B it's better so if you want that voice clarity I feel that you have a better experience using the Samsung Q990B but if you want an experience like you have at the cinema that wherever you are sitting you don't really feel that the sound is really coming from the front it's coming from somewhere in the front that is the experience that you can get with the Sony HTA9 but don't get me wrong I always have to have the voice on option otherwise I found that it's quite difficult to understand the dialogues that is happening on the film or the TV show that I'm seeing that's also one of the main features of the Sony HTA9 is the fact that when you are seeing a TV show or a film the sound is super immersive and you have an option of AI so even if you are seeing something that doesn't have Dolby Atmos it can recreate and I have to say to you guys that is simply insane if you like to see football for example since I have the Sony HT A9 I turn on the AI experience and I almost feel that I'm inside the stadium. They, I don't know how they do that, but you can hear the supporters on the back screaming and complaining about the game. And that experience never happened when I had the Samsung Q990B. So definitely a plus. And obviously when we talk about even the experience with the Dolby Atmos, I said on my review that I was quite happy with the Samsung Q990B, but when you experience the Sony HTA9, even if it's an older device compared to the Samsung Q990B, it's night and day. I never felt that I could hear something going in the diagonal, for example. And when you are hearing this, many times I can hear that the sound comes with from a different direction. Even the beginning of Netflix, I can hear bouncing on the walls before it comes directly to me. It's a crazy experience and definitely worth it in my point of view. So in other words, the Sony HTA9 makes you feel almost that the room where you are seeing your TV, it's even bigger than it was before. Even if I talk about the subwoofer that is here, I don't need a lot of power. I'm majority of the times I have in level three, level four. If I compare, for example, to the subwoofer of the Samsung, I was in minus three because it was too powerful. And when we talk about power, don't get me wrong, this is quite powerful, but it's not even close to the experience that you have with the Samsung Q990B. So if you are that kind of person that really requires super high volumes, this is definitely not the system for you. But if you are like me and you prefer quality and definition, it's night and day, it's not even comparable. Another thing to talk about the subwoofer, it's how the vibration travels when you are seeing television. So Im imagine that you have like a shot during the film and normally with the normal sound system, you hear the shot and you hear the vibration coming from a specific direction. But since these speakers are so much bigger, and imagine that the, the guy was filming and was shooting in your direction, the sound will finish, that sound of subwoofer will finish on your speakers on the rear. So that was also another experience that I never felt before I tried the Sony HTA9, even with my old sound system, with the Samsung Q990B. Another thing that you don't have to worry about is just turn on your AI experience and never turn off again. The intelligence that this system has is so powerful compared to anything that I tried that you just press on and leave it. You don't have to think about it once again. Whatever you are seeing a TV show, a film, or you are even hearing music, the AI will adjust and delivers a great experience. Another thing that you may ask yourself is the volume. <laughs> if you like to hear music, this is quite important for you. First of all, I have an experience with the Sony HT9 that I never had with other sound system. Even if I have this on the maximum volume, I never felt that the sound that I can take out of this one can really hurt my ears. It seems that the frequencies, they are adjusted to the room where I am. When I go to an experience like the Samsung 
Q990B, that story is not the same. But also when we talk about volumes, and I can give you numbers, when I was using the Samsung Q990B, the maximum volume for me was 35, and I didn't want it more than that. But when I'm using the Sony HTA9, the volume is at 100%. That's a bit annoying for me. And also, there is no distortion whatsoever coming from this one. But if you like to hear music at Amazon Music, and I don't know if it's because the central controller is too close to the front speakers, I found that I had some distortion. But if you have the Spotify, no problem whatsoever. The experience was amazing. And if you turn on the AI, and I was using and hearing a specific music from a Portuguese band that have multiple voices. You could hear from the front speakers, the main vocalist, and all the other voices that they are like, imagine 12 voices, they are all coming from the back. And many times I was putting myself on the side and it was like amazing. I could hear the singer there and I could hear the other voices there. And it's an experience that I never had and I heard that music multiple times with the Samsung Q990B as a reference. And another thing that makes me love so much this sound system is that majority of the times I don't have to do anything. I normally turn off the voice enhance if I want to hear music because I found that the quality of sound was not the same and many times I have to change to music. But anything else, I have everything in auto. And another thing that I really like is the fact that if you connect this to a Sony TV, you have on the bar all the options. I want more bass, I want less bass, I want more rear speakers, I want less rear speakers. Which type of customization I want to my sound, I want to turn on the AI or not. So all that options appears on that menu that is the menu of your TV, so definitely a plus. So in the end of the day, do I recommend the Sony HTA9 and knowing that is so expensive even in these days and I have to say to you guys that it really depends on you if everything that I said makes sense for you just buy it because nothing else can deliver the experience that the Sony HTA9 can deliver but if you are like me you like music really loud, this is not the system but if you want the convenience to don't have to do anything if you want very high-end quality of sound. If you don't use Amazon Music, this is for you because it's insane. And if you see a lot of films and TV shows, the Atmos experience is not even comparable. If you have any questions, leave in the comments below. My name is Marco, this is Matt Peck. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment below, smash the thumbs up, do whatever you want, but always with a smile on your face. And I hope to see you in the next one.